Hi guys, this is Hai Kumar Kurtibada. In this video, we will learn how to call an API by using create resource in SolidJS. In this video, we will focus on a particular API and we'll try to call that API in a simpler fashion. So let me quickly jump into Visual Studio Code. Here, let's create one API call and use a function which is an arrow function, something like fetch data is my function and this is an arrow function which should return an promise so let me return a promise but let me get the data and return that promise so here i'm awaiting a fetch api call and the api call url is something like let me get from json placeholder and just use to do's and this is the list of content let me copy this and put it over here now this is one promise and this has to return one more promise called as json. json will return one more promise and that should be captured by our create resource. So let me create a create resource, create resource and it is coming from our solid JS and this create resource what I am doing is I am just calling this fetch data. So this fetch data will be retrieving the data and it will return back the data in a format of an array where this array contains any of the variable that variable will receive all the data sent from this callback function. So let me copy this user and here we are getting the users. Let me make it as users and save this and now I can loop this and showcase in the UI. So let me use an index here because we are getting a loop or an array so let me use each and each will receive the users and these users will act like a signal so let me use off and now this will return a callback function so let me use a flower base because we are using a dynamic content and we want to execute some javascript logic over here and let me make it as user and here what i can do is i can just return a paragraph with this user title let me use user dot title and let me save this now whenever this api call is success then i'll be getting the data into users and the users will be looped over here and will be getting the output something like user dot title let me go to the browser and here let me go and reload so now you are seeing await and it is giving a problem why because if we are using an await that function should be a sync function and let me save this go back let me reload now let me go to the console network and let me reload this so you got a to do's and it is returning the data let's see what's the problem here we are using a user and we are using the index component so index component will always return each and every object in a signal format let me use off and save this go here and you can see all the data which is returned from that particular array so till here we are calling an api call but there is one more property which will give us the data regarding the loading and the error formats of that particular API. For example, this API is an asynchronous API and hence it takes some certain time. So that time is called as a loading time and once the loading is done, either you will be getting a success response or a failure response. Let's see about showing a loading indicator when this API is in progress. So for that sake, what I'll do is I'll just create one users and this users getter will give you the value like this but without a getter it has a property called as loading and whenever the users is in loading state then I want to show a paragraph and that paragraph is something like loading and if it is not loading then we can expect a success or a failure case for now I am treating it as a success case hence I can return this index cut this and paste over here. So what I am doing when this is in the loading state, I am showing the loading. If it is not loading, then I am showing the index. Let me save this, go here and just clear this off and reload. Now you can see loading indicator. It came for a fraction of second. And for that understanding, let me make it as slow 3G and just I'll reload this. Now you can see once the API is initiated over here, you can see the loading indicator over here. So indicator loading indicator and once it is success you got the data over here so that's how you can use your loading indicator and this is about your loading indicator and the success data for example if the api gets failed in this case let me make it as to do 
this URL is wrong. So you will be getting a 404 error. Whenever you get a 404 error, this case is true whenever that API is in progress. Once the API gets failed, it doesn't have any failure case which we didn't handle over here. So let's handle that case. So these users will also give us something called as error. So whenever the loading is done, it may be giving an error or a success response. So in this case, if it is giving an error, I want to show something like error. And if it is not giving an error and the loading is also done, then it has to go into our index and it should loop the data. Let me go here and you can see loading indicator. And once it failed, actually speaking, whenever I call this, it is getting a response in the in this format. So for example, it should not get the data. Let me remove this com and go here. Just clear this off and make it as no throttling and let me reload. Now you can see you got an error and this is something like a course issue. Previously, whenever I passed it to do, it gave us a empty object. But now when I remove that com here, then it is failing and it is saying that course issue. So what is this course issue? I have explained about the course issue in my, one of my video. I'll provide the link in the description so that you can understand this course issue. But to understand in a clear fashion, it is a network API failure. So whenever there is a network API failure, then I can handle that by using the error property. So we have discussed about loading property. We have discussed about error property and you can also use a signal. And whenever that signal updates, we can call an API. Here we are calling the API only on the load of the component but we can even use whenever there is an update in the signal so how to update the signal and what are the different properties which are provided by create resource we'll see in the next video so that you will be understanding with an example and that example would be different from this so there we will be seeing create signal and how to pass a signal whenever there is a signal update how to call an api all this stuff we will be understanding in a programmatical manner in the next upcoming video Hope you like my explanation. If you like my video, like, share, subscribe to my channel for more updates. Signing off. Thank you.